Jackson 88 campaign. Following youth coordinator, the next thing I knew, Mignon was the floor coordinator for the Jackson 88 campaign at the DNC convention in Atlanta. She went from there to, to the Dukakis campaign when Reverend didn't get the nomination. She went from there to the White House with former President Clinton, which is how I got my first opportunity ever to go to the White House and eat in the, quote, mess hall. Is that right? Okay, she went from the White House to the DNC and then to becoming a book author. And she is currently in the leadership of the DNC. And I'm going to stop there because she has all kinds of information. And I want to introduce to some and present to others my friend, Minyan Moore. Well, thank you, Betty, because it is indeed an honor to be with so many people that I have grown up under, that I have watched become powerhouses in their own right. Um, I look at Jackie and I think I can honestly say that had she not been at the helm of Harold Washington's campaign, I probably would not be where I am today because she gave a young person like me an opportunity to come into the campaign and say, I wanna volunteer again. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm gonna label myself the world's greatest volunteer. And she gave us a seat over in the corner and said, go, go at it, do what you have to do. And from there, I think I just got the bug and I understood the power, the real power of really organizing and bringing communities together, which, are, which is really what you all are all about. And every time people say it's the year of the woman, I always look back to all the groundbreaking things that have happened in Chicago and I reflect on that and then I get, I get spirited one more time. But I will say this, um, this election, as you know, not just in your own hometown, but across the country, will have a consequence for years to come, not just for us, but for our children. I really do think that our democracy is at stake. I just recently had the opportunity to work with our new Supreme Court Justice, who was just installed on Friday, who I understand from one of, one of my friends as, who's a Supreme Court clerk said she came in their gang buses today. But one of the things that I discovered in working on that campaign was that there was an, and I know this is uh, nonpartisan, so I'll be very careful about that, but I know that there's a different type of Republican that's out there. There's a different type of feel. You know, we've all we've all had bipartisan relationships across the line, but there are people now that are really out to dismantle democracy and really take away the fabric of what we know as our America. So I think it's important that we stay rooted in the fact that it's not really about what we want to see, but what is it that we want our children to see? Just like somebody like Betty and others and Jackie took their arms and put it around me and said, okay, we want you to become an organizer. We want you to work for the White House. We will lift you up. I believe it is our duty to see in the future and not just at the present. And it can't, you know, I say that we can't always agree on everything. And we know that. And we know that there's been some, you know, some, I think I personally believe Chicago is portrayed in a way that I don't know it. I love my hometown. I consider Chicago my hometown. And I think we have to continue to give voice to the fact that we are a great city. We are a great state and that we are rooted in activism. You know, everybody always talks about how they're activists, they're organizer. They haven't been to Chicago because that's the root of activism and organizing. And I credit all of you for doing that. I will tell you what's at stake now is right, right across the river there, you got, a, you got a, a black woman who's running for governor. Most people think that she doesn't have a chance, but she really does have a chance. You have a young man who's running for Senate um, right in Wisconsin. People think he doesn't have a chance, but he does have a chance. What we really need to focus on is how do we keep our people in our own hometown galvanized? And if there's ways that you can branch out and say that, okay, we got Pennsylvania, we have Wisconsin, we have, we have uh, Ohio, we have, we have all these states 
that if we can just give them the extra push, if you have people in these various states while you're working to reelect your governor, working to reelect your mayor, working to reelect your state and local elected officials, if you have any extra energy, because we need, we do need some more senators, as you all have so witnessed, I'm sure. We just don't need to hang on two senators each time a president needs to pass a bill. You know, the one thing that I really am really um, perplexed by, and it has nothing to do with you, but more to do with how we're getting the message out up here in Washington, this president has done a lot of good stuff for the American people. He and this vice president have, they have done a lot of good stuff. And all you have to do is go on the White House website and you can just see and call the roll. And we have nothing to be ashamed of. And I'm sure the same thing is happening in your state with Governor Pritzker and with your Lieutenant Governor and with the mayor. Yes, I know, I listen, I hear all the politics. I hear all the politics, but I am here to tell you, I witness a level of politics that has that, that that will never match what we think we're not getting. These people are out to destroy democracy. And we have to be clear about who we want to put in office. And we have to be clear about the fact that some people might not check all the boxes we want them to check, but if they check enough, and if you know that there's a core decency, because sometimes we're just talking about decent elected officials who you can hold accountable. One thing I tell young people all the time when they get, you know, they get all riled up about this and that, I'm like, well, listen, we were taught if you're going to elect somebody, just don't go into the voting booth or vote by mail and then think that that's it. You have to go back you have to go back to their offices. Jackie, I don't know if you know this story, but when we elected Harold Washington, I was so dumb. I went down to that office every day because I wanted him to come to my church on the south side of Chicago to do a health fair. And Ed Ham, who was the scheduler, would brush me off. But I, every day after school, I'd come back again. But then they finally decided to bring the mayor to Third Baptist Church, where we had all kinds of things going on. It was carnival like we had health there. But then that's what I understood about the power of my vote. You don't cast it and walk away from it. You cast it and you hold people accountable. And we have to keep telling our young people because this really is, and I say this because they're the ones that get the most dispirited you know, we have Roe at stake right now. You know, all the young women who didn't, who weren't born missing this right. Now all of a sudden they understand what it feels like to not have a right that they were entitled to when they were born. And now it's being taken away. And we have to just crystallize these messages to these, to the young women, to the young men, to even to us, who sometimes we are harder on our elected officials than we we sometimes need to be, but I, I'm, I'm sitting here in Washington, ladies, ladies, and if there's some gentlemen on here, and I will tell you, our elected officials <laughs> are like little bitty angels compared to what we're up against. And we have to be really certain that when we say we don't wanna vote for this one because he didn't do this, and we don't wanna vote for that one because they didn't do this, you got to be real clear what you're leaving and what you're putting at stake when you do when you make that choice. I look at what's happening with uh, Reverend Warnock in in uh, Georgia. He shouldn't be running neck and neck with his opponent, but he is, and that's because people are seeing different. They, they get different cues from different people. And listen, this it doesn't make anybody bad people. But it is, it is a, we, are, we are at a point where we have to determine what we really stand for and what we believe we want to see in this American family. And if we want to see degradation, if you want to see people going after a more than qualified Supreme Court justice, if you want to see people 
just really using vile and ugly language and storming your capital on January 6th, all you got to do is stay home because they're running and they're running, running, and running. And please don't take for granted that they are not galvanized. Everybody has a stake in this and so do they. So we all have to understand completely that whatever we want to see, and that's all I will leave you with is what do you want to see on the, on the day after election? Who do you want to see in office? Don't let them pretend that they are who they are when they say, you know, we have these, we like Karen Bass is running in California. She's running against a, uh, a billionaire who was Republican, then he turned independent, then he turned Republican again. So you got to ask the question, well, okay, who is she really running against? We have to know who we are running against. And yes, hold your, I'm not saying to you, don't hold your elected officials accountable. You have to hold them accountable. And women in particular, I put a lot of, I put a lot of my faith in women. I just simply do. And I am not a sexist. I am just a, I am a revolutionary when it comes to women and women. And I'm not even talking about women's rights. I am talking about why we know that we have to show up because we know we have to show up because we're showing up for education. Most of us are taking care of our parents right now. We're showing up for child care. We're showing up for all the things that you never see on the ballot, but it's what we have to show up for. We're showing up for Medicare. We're showing up for lower prescri prescription drugs. And so I think that we're always at the forefront and do we always get what we want? We should. I am telling you, Chicago, we should get everything that you all fight for. You should get it. There's no question in my mind that you should not hold your elected officials accountable for the things you fight for so that you can come back over and over again. You know, I say, I say all the time, leave more behind than you can take away. Well, they have to start leaving more behind than they take from each of you. Betty and Jackie and your screen's free at this for years. Years. And it should be a point where they should not have to fight this hard. But since we do, let's do it. Give it one more good try, Chicago. <laughs> one more good try. And then we can say, y'all got it. Because I'm going to go wherever y'all go, I'm going with you. And that is a fact. <laughs> but you put your hearts into these elections every year, every cycle. And I thank you for it. I sincerely thank you for it. Right now, you all are fighting for the convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm part of the, I'm a co-chair of the, I'm a nonpartisan co-chair. <laughs> yeah, 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 Chicago. <laughs> but you know, there's so many wonderful things that's happening in the state of Illinois. And you know, get out here and fight on student reduction too, because these kids need it. Listen, every time something pops up on my email, I send it to my sister. Hashtag student reduction. Don't forget to apply because this impacts our families. These the, every little bit helps. So I'll stop there and say, I love you all. I am so honored to be a part of this group and I'll take questions if you need it. I got one. Sure. I uh, just want you to share a little bit about your book. Oh, okay. There's probably information in the book that, well, I read it, so I won't say probably, there is information in the book that would be very helpful, especially to young people who are on the line. Well, actually, the book was written because we had a we had a producer that wanted to do a show on me and several of my friends, all of us, all of whom, by the way, work for Reverend Jackson, and they wanted to do a, a HBO series. We literally had signed on the dot to do the series. When the scripts came back, it started, we started looking at it saying to ourselves, oh my God, you know, me, myself, I was saying, oh my God, my family in Chicago, my friends in Chicago will be like, really, is this what you went to Washington for? Because they don't know, you know, you know how Hollywood do you, 
So one of our friends said to us, Isaiah Thomas, in fact, he said to us, you all need to step back and you need to lay down a marker about what, what you have accomplished and what you hope to accomplish to give young people and women in particular a roadmap to doing you know, politics on a national level. And so we decided to step back and we wrote the book. Some places is funny, some places are very serious. We will all give Reverend, we do all give Reverend Jackson credit for having propelled us to this level um, because had he not run twice, we would not have had the experience to even go into a White House or to be the chair of a national party or to, to run conventions, which all of us have done. And so we kind of tell our journey. I talk about my hometown, Chicago, with love, of course. And um, it, is a, it is a love letter in many ways to young people. And hopefully we'll do an appendix, you know, at some point in our lives. But, you know, that's why we decided to write it. And I think one reason majorly why we decided to write it was because we felt like we owed so much to the women, like Reverend Barrow, and Coretta Scott King and Betty Shabazz and Maya Angelou, who all took us under their wings to, you know, to help us out and to make sure we had a path forward. So that's why we wrote the book. Can you give the name of the book and the other authors with it? It is actually know. called. I know, but <laughs> it is called For Color Girls Who Considered Politics. And we, <laughs> we fell into that title. But anyway, it's, it, it's all explained in the book. And thank you for plugging the book. The book is actually two or three years old now, by the way. <laughs> but it's still relevant today, so. Hi, Min Young. And, and the other authors, Min Young, besides you? Oh, uh, yes, three. it's Donna Brazil, Leah Daughtry, and Yolanda Carraway as four authors. Okay. Try writing a book with four people who got <laughs> <laughs> who all got something to say. <laughs> okay, so you... Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> okay, well, I did read Hack and I enjoyed reading the part where you guys were talking about being in the back in Donna Brazil's backyard, drinking wine and talking about <laughs> how you all were going to just tame Washington, D.C. I felt like I was there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, my question was, uh, is um, I want to know I saw you in the room. I saw you sitting behind Katanji Brown Jackson and I was almost in tears like, oh my God, I know her, I know her. And that made me feel so close to um, Justice uh, Jackson just by the mere fact of being able to recognize just a, not, not someone with a title, not an elected, mm -hmm. but someone I knew from the South side of Chicago. What was that room like? You know, Mary, that's a really, really good question because prior to us getting to the room, we had took her through what was called murder boards. And I'm sure Jackie, through debates with Mayor Washington, will understand what I'm talking about. And you take them through what you believe will be the toughest questions, the most vile questions. And so you situate them around the table, very similar to what you saw in the hearing room. And so you throw at her questions that are ugly. You know, as you notice, they tried to make her out to be a child pornographist, a pedophile, and you know, I don't know how low they could go. But so we we, we did all of that before she got in the room. So she was well prepared to take on the questions because the thing about her is she is so brilliant. I mean, she's probably forgot half of what we'll ever know. But she's so brilliant, she was so smart, and she's so measured. What we were really teaching her was the theater and the politics and to not get caught off guard about what she will see. Now, when you go into the room, you know in your mind intellectually that they are going to throw everything but the kitchen sink. Now, up until that point, she had met with almost 80 senators herself. And some of those senators, some of the very ones that was doing all the theaters said, oh, just tell us what you need. We're going to be there for you, Republican and Democrat. And we, you know, if there's anything I need to know, just let us know. I'm thinking of one in particular. So when you sit there, nothing prepares you for it. It's certainly, I was taken back 
So if you notice, I wore my glasses the entire time because there's something called the resting face so that you wouldn't give off that this stuff was offensive and that it was just, nobody should have to go through it. I don't care, black, white, blue, and different. Nobody should have go, had to go through what she went through. But nothing prepared me, honestly, after we had prepared her, I mean, to a point where one day we stopped we stopped the uh, we stopped the hearing sessions because we felt like it was just getting a little too combative, and so we said let's let her just let her go home. But when you walk in there and then you hear Ted Cruz and you hear Holly and you hear Lindsay and you hear you know the the woman from uh, Tennessee when you hear them talking you say to yourself who are they talking to. And that's when you realize, that's when it all comes to you. They're not really talking to her, but you, need, you know, your soul can only take so much. I remember her pulling me to the side one day and saying, oh, they can't really be that bad, can they? Now she had gone through some level of these hearings before. And we all, I said to him, I'm sorry, ma'am, but yeah, they can be that bad. And just, you know, just know when you go in there and sit in that chair, that they're not really talking to you. They're telegraphing to someone else. And it wasn't until Corey, <laughs> Corey gave her the oh, opportunity man, to yeah. exhale and to just let it out. Cause I'm yeah. sure, I mean, even the most human spirit couldn't take some of that stuff. So yeah. it was, it was very, very different, Mary, even from what we prepared, it just nothing prepares you. And that's what I mean about what we're up against because there's a level of cruelty that's going around in this country. That's, I'm just, you know, it just takes me back. One thing I will say is if you all have any friends that's running for secretary of state around the country, and it, some, cause it's a lot of women running, please check in on them because they are being threatened. They are having, you know, they're doing a great job but it is very, very tough for them. That's, um, I hope I answered your question, Barry. Oh, yeah, very vividly. <laughs> Mary, does that satisfy you? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so any other, uh, any other questions for Minya? I'm sorry, my allergies are acting up, so my voice keeps going in and out, but uh, I'm here. No COVID, just allergies. I know it's a shame we all have to announce we don't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but but Minyan, uh, you know, so you talked about the states around us, and I am particularly interested in uh, Mandela Barnes. Mm -hmm. So uh, so for a while he was really leading in the polls, and apparently the GOP has poured a lot of money into Ron Johnson. Yeah. So now it looks like Ron Johnson is pulling ahead. So it is. Is that the way you're seeing it from DC or is that just a kind of like- a In a lot of those thing? races. Yeah, when they looked like they were surging ahead, now right. they're tightening up, which is traditional. But in this instance, because you you are talking about Ron Johnson, you can def definitely believe Mandela's gonna have to do a turnout. I mean, his is either gonna, you know, gotta either turn out early vote by mail or in person. He's got to really have a strong turnout operation. And same thing with Stacy, by the way, in Atlanta. She's going to have to have a very strong turnout race because and, what's happening. And Reverend Warnock as well, I would imagine, right? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting because Reverend Warnock is about two to three points ahead, which is really kind of sad because of the person who's running again. Yeah, God absolutely. bless. But yeah. uh, he is doing fairly well with the republicans who don't want to vote for his opponent okay and so he's picking up that plus he's picking up black men stacy is hemorrhaging a little bit with both categories oh. but she's got an incredible turnout operation and she's going to definitely have to put it to use got i it. think i saw miss levine's hand up so so is the DNC uh, doing the same thing for Mandela that uh, the Republicans are doing for Johnson? Yeah, the DGA is really pouring into him because they uh -huh. see that as a winnable race and the DNC. Now, I will tell you, they never do everything they should be doing, but I think they have done a sufficient job in helping Mandela. 
both Mandela, the DGA is doing a phenomenal job on all of their candidates. So, and, okay. you know, in all the right. DSCC. Uh, huh. mm. Yeah. Yeah, you know the, I mean? the, the, the DSCC has not been a, a, yeah, they're not, a good they're organization. Not. But see, that's where you go up can put your weight too. And you know, you put your weight on calling these calling the DSCC. In fact, I'll flag if you all are seeing that in Wisconsin, I'll flag it for Holly to make sure she's on top of it. Um, because I you know, the DSCC is, you know, they're good, but they could probably do more, I'm sure. Yeah, for for sure. Okay, and so you you mentioned the 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 Secretary of State. Well, you know, Michigan is a is a you know as you know another state that's close uh -huh. to us has a lot of crazies running around. Um, so how how are you seeing the the race for governor for um, Attorney General and Secretary of State up there? They're actually running one of the best campaigns because they're running neck and neck with each other. They're, they, they've kind of interlocked. Plus, they have a ballot initiative, an abortion ballot initiative. I would say it, I would call mm -hmm. it a, a choice ballot initiative. But right. They have a ballot initiative. And so they're doing pretty good. And their secretary of state is pretty aggressive. She's really aggressive. And she's, you know, she's, you know, she takes no prisoners, but still. You know, like I said, the challenge we have is the unknown. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you look back at Hillary's race, you know, the one question I used to ask in Hillary's race all the time, do you see the other side galvanized the way they were with Obama running? Do you see them galvanized for Trump? And I was trying to see if the analytics were showing any movement. And of course they go, oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. Hmm. Listen, they came out the woodworks. Yeah. And it's a recent poll that shows and suggests, now I don't know which, which white person it is, Carol, Phyllis, or, or whoever on here, but they are saying that white, white people are really, really galvanized. And I'm hoping it's women. And I'm hoping it's women for choice. But you never know, you know, because right. we still have, we still have our nemesis running around. You got it. So I don't want to ask all the questions. Um, does Carol anyone has, else? Carol has a question. Jay. All right, Carol. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious about our our messaging, um, and particularly because I've been following the the work of. SEIU on messaging to, mm -hmm. to people of color mm -hmm. and that, that often our messaging is off in, in terms of how we are doing that. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of how we are messaging to younger voters mm -hmm. and that, that, you know, that, and, and as a parent of maybe not quite so young, younger voters. Uh, my kids are in their 40s and 50s, but they're very turned off. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and they'll vote because they know I'll kill them if they don't. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm very concerned about, are we really sending the right messages mm -hmm. to the right people? in this particular election? Well, both great questions. And we have seen in a lot of the polling, young people are not energized. And one of the things that we're trying out now, Carol, and I'll send you some of the, um, I'll send you some of the stuff for young people and the, uh, some of the stuff for people of color. And I'll, I'll go back to some of my friends in the Latino community and make sure I get their messaging too. But one of the things that we're, tr we're trying to say to them and to ourselves, because for some reason, whatever we're doing here in Washington is definitely not transmitting down. So what we are saying to them is that whatever has been accomplished, it hasn't been accomplished because Biden did it. It is because you put them in office 
to do. And you got to give them four or five things that they're interested in. You know, they're definitely interested in climate change. You got a good climate change bill. They definitely are interested in the student loans. I mean, people of color are definitely interested in, you know, making sure we can get uh, prescription drugs down and making sure fair housing, you know, the homeless population, all of these things are really important. So what I'll do not to take up enough time, I'll send it back to Betty and you can send it around to the entire group if you choose. Just some, you know, basic PowerPoints that people are doing, but it is very, very challenging. And I welcome any thoughts that you all might have to get young people out because the thing that, the thing that is uh, most distressing is that, Carol, it is not about us. It really is about them. And if they can't see themselves in their, and see their future, then we are really in a bad way. Now, that's not, that's not all young people, because there are some that are really, really galvanized. But most of them believe that nothing is happening here in Washington. They don't think anything is happening on voting rights. You know, they barely think anything is happening on climate change. They don't see anything happening on crime. They, I mean, all the things that they kind of put their finger in the dike on, police brutality, they don't see it. Those two bills, you know, didn't, didn't get through Congress. But the one thing we can say to them is there are things that did happen as a result of you. Because I believe that you have to give the power back to them. Because all the time we're telling them, oh, you got to elect this person because of this, this, and this. No, you elect whatever person you elect, then you hold them. You, you hold the key. You are the power broker here. And so we're trying that language out, especially for young people and for people of color, just flipping it just a little bit. I, I, I would have to say, I sometimes question whether we have chosen the right, the right people well, for that's these young question. people. Yeah. I mean, but again, Carol, I believe that that's also, that's also something that they have to focus on. They have to believe that they have the power to choose and to elect the people they want in office. And I don't know how we can transmit that to them, but if they decide that they want Carol Levine to run for Senate, I mean, it was young people. Please, no. Jack, if you, I know. <laughs> But Jackie, if you recall, when we came down to Harold Washington's office, all we said was, we, we have a bunch of young people that want to work for you. And you say, great, here's your walk sheet, go for it. And young people became a margin of victory too. And we understood that. But somehow I think they've, we've lost that, that, that training mechanism and that, that grassroots mechanism that will involve them. And we just got to keep bringing them in. And it's even harder these last two years because of COVID, because we're all like on Zooms and it's so impersonal. And, you know, give, a, give them a chance to hear what they have to say, because we're not all right and they're not all wrong. Just give them a chance, because they do have some good ideas now. They will take you to technology before you can blink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, go for it. But that's where they live. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a 13-year-old grandson who could run circles around anybody. Exactly. Dee has her hand up, Jackie. Uh, I'd like to follow up a little bit on Carol in terms of, of messaging. I personally feel that the whole question of choice breaks in our favor. But all that I hear about, um, we just came off a... Um, Skyline Village, Chicago, Zoom on cash bail. And all of my neighborhood uh, uh, interactions have to do with crime. And there is this false notion that the Democrats are soft on crime. That's ridiculous. All of us want to live in safe neighborhoods, but we want to approach it in a way that's safe for everyone. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not sure how, how to turn this around because I think it's going to harm us at the polls as so many, uh, I worry about that. And I also worry about the fact that I feel that this administration has done so much good and has passed so much good legislation, even though obviously we have miles to go. Why, 
why isn't that message getting out? And why is it that the message that we're soft on crime seems to be making the rounds? How, how do we deal with that? Well, I will tell you what I experienced when I went back to the White House uh, to work on Justice Jackson's nomination. First of all, they I realized very quickly that the power was not inside the White House. And I thank God for my teachings of a younger, younger days, because if I had waited for the White House to tell me how to organize and build support for her, we'd still be waiting because they have so many different things on their plate. And frankly, I do think, and I, I would say it to them, so I don't, I don't have no fear of retribution here. I do think we have had a horrible time trying to get distill the message and get the message out of their accomplishments. Now, I do believe in this last month or so, they've been doing much, much, much better. And I don't know if any of you all get any of the talking points or if you even care to get any of the talking points, I can send you the links so that you can stay up to date in real time. And that's half the battle. Because what I discovered in organizing around the country is lack of information. And if you don't have the information, it's hard for you to articulate the information. And then you don't even know that like a call like this, you can request someone from the White House to be on your call, to explain to each and every one of you what they are doing. How do we talk about crime? How do we talk about the accomplishments? And I, you know, if you all want, want me to reach out to anyone for your next call, I'm happy to do that as you go across the finish line because see, those are the things that we did. We had Zoom calls like this across the country. We were like reaching out to everyone because the information gap was so great. And that's, that really is part of the challenge. We organized young people, like one of the groups that we thought would be interesting to organize for her was young lawyers. We had thousands of lawyers on conference calls and Zooms. They had never had heard from a White House before. And what we have to do is lure the barrier to entry so that you all can become advocates and evangelists for the things that you know are right. You don't have to, like Carol said, it might not be everything you want or, <clears throat> or even the person you want, but there's some things that they have done and they have done right. Now, I will tell you on this crime issue, one of the things that I noticed in the NAACP's um, in their PowerPoint they're hitting it both ways. They're hitting it on the police brutality and as it relates to the gun violence in the community. And so you have to figure out who are the messengers that are talking about this because it's important. Reverend used to talk about it all the time. He used to talk about crime, black on black crime in the neighborhoods. He used to talk about teenage pregnancy and it's the messenger that can help you get it out you know, and make sure that it is amplifying because you're right, we can look like we are soft on crime when in fact we are not. We are smart on crime and we are not just penalizing the police or penalizing the community. We're trying to figure out what is this model that can make sure that every part of the community is respected. Whether it's a child that's walking down the street and just hit by a miscellaneous bullet or whether it's a, a, a police that is not doing its job and harassing young black kids. All of that stuff has been, some of that has been addressed in President Biden's uh, new crime proposal. And maybe we just need to get you the information and make sure that you can have the information to, as they say, walk the streets with. <laughs> so Betty, I'm happy to organize uh, one of the, one of the senior members, you know, maybe Cedric or yeah. Lance Bottom or someone to come on and talk to you all about the accomplishments of the White House. Keisha well. would be great. Yeah. Keisha would be absolutely awesome. You know, I wanted to mention one of the things that's happening is uh, there's propaganda that's uh, been mailed out. I don't know if it's throughout the, I, I'm, it is throughout the state of Illinois because it's focused on the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, that that where they are actually infiltrating communities now yeah. via that way so i don't know if that's gotten back you know there oh, yeah. but 
but it is causing all kind of craziness. I get, I've gotten a couple of emails and said, why, why you didn't tell me about this? And the first thing I said is delete that. That is propaganda. Do not pass it on. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. talk a little bit on that, please. Well, another good question and another spot check because the disinformation is real and it's coming from Russia, it's coming from Australia, it's coming from all the places. I'll give you a perfect example in, I think it was 216 or maybe even 220. There was an Australian guy sitting over behind his computer pretending that he was the Black Lives Matters uh, advocate. He had over 700,000 Facebook followers. And it, it, he was spewing out all kinds of hate, all kinds of crazy, and it had nothing to do with them. We just found out here recently that Russia, again, has started a lot of propaganda. They do have here in Washington a whole section of people that are just scouring the internet and just looking for disinformation and making sure that they attack it. And I will tell you, if the governor doesn't have an infrastructure around him for disinformation, then that's short-sighted because the disinformation, Mary, is so real. And for people that are vulnerable, they will look at this and get confused because they, they put people on there that look like you, look like us, look like women, look like you know people of color. Then all of a sudden you think they're real people when they're just people they have made up and bought their picture and using, using their information. So it is a real it is a real thing that they target up here. SEIU has a good program, by the way, Carol, on disinformation. And the DNC has a fairly decent one, but they have a whole, I mean, it's like a funding stream right now for just disinformation. Betty, do you see any more hands? Yeah, Adrian Jones had a question. Okay, um, good afternoon. I do have your book, it was wonderful. And I do appreciate everything that you've done for the Black women of Chicago and everywhere else that you have touched with your uh, ministry in politics. But one thing that you just said, and you said every part of the community is respected, that that's the message that you wanted to get out. You know, in Illinois, they just passed the Safety Act. And a lot of people are, are, are very, very um, confused about how this is going to impact crime in, in Chicago and in Illinois. If they're letting people go without really thinking about um, what this person has done. They have made it to the individual. This, they're letting everybody out of jail and they're going to have all these people running around killing everybody. And it's, it's not that. And I think this one sentence could clear it up for so many people that this act clearly wants to make every part of the community respected, mm -hmm. you know, because there are things in there for the judges, there are things mm -hmm. in there for the actual criminals, you know, the first time criminal, they're not letting, you know, the uh, machine gun people go, but they're, they're certainly not holding people with minor crimes in jail because they cannot pay bail, you know, and that's that's the essence of this thing. But there are a lot of things. No bill is perfect. I'm sure there's some things they're going to have to correct as you go along. But I think that one sentence, uh, Minya, would be so helpful to all of these representatives that have to uh, to have to say this and 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 protect and, and and project their bill as a good thing, you know that they're looking for the police, the the citizens, and everybody else, and not just the criminals. Well, I will certainly make sure that we're amplifying it, um, Adrian, and I think you all should as well because part of the problem, as you know, with crime, is you know it. <laughs> It's one of these needles where you have to thread it because one one community feels like, okay, well, we got police brutality. Then we have we can't turn a blind eye to you know what's happening in our community. But truth of the matter is, we have more good in our communities than we have bad. 
and somehow we manage to overpower or let these let the bad apples. I can't, I like to say to people, two percent of your population is probably the bad apples, mm -hmm. but they get the most press, mm -hmm. and we got to overwhelm them. And I will give this last point on Justice Jackson since it's the freshest. One thing that we realized very early on that we couldn't do was we couldn't outbeat the Republicans on the negative. So we decided that we were going to make her campaign based on qualifications, based on information and based on joy. And see, you know, they, they can't deal with joy. At all. <laughs> joy is a little bit tough for them. So what you have to do, <laughs> you have to do is try to figure out a space where you can go over them and really start energizing people and giving them giving them the energy and the will to make it look like this is a movement and a campaign and it's not something that we got to drag them across the finish line. I mean, is there one person on your ballot that everybody likes? Is there more than one person on your ballot that everybody likes? Or maybe you just want to give a collective message about how you all feel as women in Chicago, plus men. I see Tony, my brother, and how you hey, all feel, feel as women, hey, you know. Oh, uh, Mignon, yeah. there's a question in the chat. With all the money that is available under the IJUA and the IRA, how is the administration going on getting the funds spent as intended? And why y'all gonna ask me that? As you know, come on. It's going as should be intended, but it is not going quick enough. Let's put it, gotcha. I will leave it Got at it. That. Got it. It is not being dispensed quick enough. And I also think that's another place where you can weigh in with, you know, HHS in Illinois, your Health and Human Services Department. You can weigh in with your governor, you can weigh in with anybody that oversees any par portion of money mm -hmm. that comes from Washington that goes to your state, you have an obligation and the authority, by the way, mm -hmm. to reach out and to complain and to lift it up because you know, you got all this money going out the door, but if it's not hitting the right people in the right populations, what good is it? But that's where you all come in on the ground, really. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, that's true. We just had a, some of us had a meeting with the governor's office uh, last Friday about mm -hmm. exactly the transportation money uh, that's yep. coming in and how they're spending it, right? So, you know, it's meant to be something to reconnect communities. It's something to deal with climate change, et cetera. And what do they want to do? Build more roads. And so we were saying no more roads, not until we fix our transit system, until we do some, some bike and pedestrian uh, amenities that we work on safety, because the number of pedestrians and cyclists that are being killed every year is, um, it gets, keeps getting worse, right? I think it's about 13% increase anticipated, you know, in, in 2021 over 2020. So um, no, you're absolutely right. And, you know, that is our responsibility and we have to keep at it. Yeah, I think people forget that, um, you know, and I used to say this to my team when I was in the White House all the time. The one thing that's for certain, we will come in and we will come out. The one thing that could be for certain is you might get your ret cause return or you might not. But what is for certain is that we work for you. We work for you and your hard earned taxpayers dollars. Nobody is getting a corporate check in government, mm -hmm. you all are paying these people to do your to do their job, mm -hmm. and you know I think we I think we forget it a little bit because we're so busy electing them and trying to get you know get the right people in place, but they work for us. And I used to tell my team all the time, you okay? You better <laughs> pray they they call you back. You better do something. <laughs> I don't care if it's a tour on Saturday or Sunday. I don't care if it's a lunch a mess lunch, whatever it may be, always keep in mind you work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For and sure. if we kept that in mind enough, you'd understand the power. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. So, uh, Betty, have I missed any more hands or anything in the chat that I may have missed? I'm looking now. Dee just went off to celebrate her 63 years of marriage. Oh, I think that's so wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to share this information. This is personal with Minyan. Minyan Hazel Thomas is on the line. Linda Hall is on. Ah. Uh, Crystal Gardner, who is Mary's baby girl, Joe Gardner's baby girl are on the line and they're all on here and of course you already mentioned my son tony who i'm glad he joined in we're just all so happy and so proud of you so super proud of you. Hazel was, was was with you when you came to the white house her and S. yeah she and i came and you took us to the mess hall and we got to walk around i felt really important i was like a big what, <laughs> big, big egg in the in the, no big hen in the egg house that's right <laughs> But it's the people's house. That's why okay, I never it forgot the it. People's house. Yeah, I'm so proud of you, uh, Jackie. You. Did you want to? Uh, yeah, I just want to. Did Judas want to have some closing remarks? I saw Judas somewhere too. Yeah. Go ahead, no, Jackie. Yeah, I just want to echo what you said, uh, Minyan. Yes, you're one of our our political children um, from the South Side of Chicago, and we are proud whenever our children do well. And so, you know, you, you make us all very proud with the accomplishments you have and want you to keep on keeping on because uh, we need you as an inspiration to all these young people we've been talking about. So like Adrian knows, Adrian was in those Harold Washington fights with us as well. So uh, along with Mary and Joe, I mean, Joe was my right hand as I was working um, for the feds and running the old campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so funny. Joe, Joe, Joe was my Joe was my cover. So uh so yeah, we all have history and 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 we're all in some way or another are related and had can take uh take a little bit of credit for all the success that we've had. But Jude, uh Judith, um you want to go ahead and and do a closing mark. Menyang, the CWTA, I chair and Betty and Judith are co-chairs. So we're kind of like the triumvirate. So I want to give Judy an opportunity to say something because Bay and I have been dominating you all evening. So and yes. also some people are putting in the chat to me personally, they're ordering the book. They ordered the book. Oh, okay. Good, Thank good, 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 good. So your sales will go up, Minya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I learned a lot. I just love the perspectives that you have of hope and optimism and concrete how to get it done. Um, and the politics of joy, I think is, I mean, not in the way that Hubert Humphrey did it, but in the right. way, um, right. <laughs> and it also makes me, um, I think I, I would have loved to just keep going. And I've now have even greater appreciation of Betty and Jackie and all that they've done. So. I think as a group, we need to continue this conversation um, as well as sort of imbue it in our activism because this was just great and come back. I mean, we just, we love you in Chicago and, um, and we'll support what you do too. So thank you so much. Well, I do have a home in Chicago. I actually have two. I have one in Olympia Fields, but I also just bought uh, 47th and St. Lawrence. All right, coming back, we back to the Bronzeville. <laughs> yeah, I sure right. did. <laughs> Benyon, is there anything we can do to help what yeah. you're pushing at the DNC? Well, I think you, if you just continue to use your voice, this is a powerful group. I recognize so many of the names on here, and just never take for granted how powerful you are. I mean, the, the governor is powerful up here in Washington, your Lieutenant Governor Stratton, she's powerful up here. And just know that you can use your influence, use me in a way that can help keep pushing the doors open for people that you feel like are not getting the resources they need, whether it's at home or whether it's in other states like Jackie mentioned with Mandela. Just know that you have many, many resources that you have at your disposal and we're here to we're here to help. That's all I can say. We're here, we're here to help. Terrific. That's awesome. Okay. Anything else before we let Minyan go? Now it's it's getting pretty late out here on the East Coast, so we want to keep her all night. Oh, this is early. Uh, so, 
So anything <laughs> else? I'm in Brooklyn right now, Minneapolis. Oh, so you are. I'm, I'm on the okay. coast with you. Um, but uh, but any anything else from anybody? Just thank you so much. This has really been great. Thank you. Thank it was you. my honor, really my honor, and thank you for inviting me. Right. Thank you Thanks so much, you. Jackie. Thank, I mean, Jackie. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> thank you, Jackie, because when when, yeah. when I put you in, I said, Jackie, you send a letter because it's so self-serving for me to send it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it was self-serving for her, too. She just looked back down. <laughs> well, thank you again, and I'll let you all get back to your meeting. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you all so right, much. Right. Have Thanks. a blessed day, Mignon. Thank you, Betty. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, wow. uh, another great meeting. Um, and so, Sherry, you have the challenge of, of editing this for YouTube. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but no, I, I, I agree with, with uh, what Judith said. This has really been terrific. And, you know, we always learn something. You know, I think I know a lot about politics, and you have somebody like Mignon from a different yeah. perspective come on and discover that there's a lot of thing, things I don't know. So uh, always a learning experience. So. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I think we had a really great meeting. Uh huh. And I think we should take her up on getting some of these White House yeah, people White House to people. come and talk yeah. to us. I yeah, that'd be terrific. That would be. You know, it, it's really clarifying. It's really just helpful. The more we get in, um, it 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 does help us be as effective as we can be. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it. I mean, and if we could do it in person, I think. You know, talk oh. about membership. Um, right. I think right. if, yeah. we, if we could pull that off, that would be really great. Um, Terrific. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, um, I, I just want to interject. Get people right now. Go ahead, Phyllis. Just I just wanted to interject. We had a number of people who were who thanked us for inviting, and we have to thank them for coming. Uh -huh. yeah, it's for wonderful sure. to have all the all <laughs> all of you here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so much. Jackie, this is Adrian. So we have possibly um, 17, 18 new aldermen coming into the city of Chicago. It hasn't happened since Harold won remap and you were out there getting all these people right to, to be aldermen of the wards in the city of Chicago. And we have to remember also some of those folks were rabble rousers. They were young. They were a little bit different. People were afraid and they did, some of them did really, really good job at what they were doing. So we're about to see that again. What do you think about that? Did you go away on me, Jackie? I no, think she's you know. there, but I'm going to answer real quick. No, go ahead, Betty, if please. I am doing nothing until after November 8th not even thinking about who's saying they're going to run because I don't <laughs> believe it until they file in December. Okay. I mean, November. So until November 8th, I am single focused like a horse with blinders on, on November 8th. Or, I'm afraid yeah. of what's going to happen if we don't focus. Well, on you got to be careful that, uh, you know, just, just keep it in the, on the side view mirror, but no, you got to watch. Back. It's in the oh, back right now. Okay. okay. Jackie, are you gone? Are you still with us? She's having she's having fun with her grandkids. So that's how they I are. think so. But this was great. Thank you. I paid my dues now, uh, Betty. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And and last minute announcement, our votercade here in Chicago from Rainbow Push to the Loop Super Site is Monday, 